finally the moment we've all been waiting for, AMD's RX Vega. This is the RX Vega 64, this is the air-cooled special edition as you can see by the rather shiny heatsink and we're going to be taking a look at it in this video so do stick around. So first things first, let's take a look at the specs of this card. This one is pretty interesting, obviously features the new Vega 14 nanometer architecture, actually has something like 12.5 billion transistors which is kind of crazy, features 4096 stream processors inside 30, uh, 64 uh, next generation compute units, you also have 64 ROPs and 256 texture units, you have 8 gigabytes of HBM2 memory which is obviously a new technology with a 2048 bit memory interface down from 4096 in the Fury X if I remember rightly uh, and also a clock speed of 1274 base with a 1546 boost although I personally observed only 1536 with very brief bursts up to 1640. In turbo mode the max power this card will draw AMD lists anyway is 295 watts and in terms of pricing it's currently listed on its own for $499. As I mentioned this one is the special edition and as such you actually get this glass hollow cube. Now it's not the same one that you would have seen Linus's uh, video on where you can plug it in with a USB type C connector and have stuff show up. This one is just a uh, sort of glass almost paperways if you like but a very cool looking thing with the Vega logo built into it. The special edition card is still a blower style design just has the uh, RX Vega logo embossed on the front and obviously still a blower design with a load of ventilation at the back as well as three display port ports and one HDMI port and actually a fully black rear plate as well which is very rare and very awesome. On the side of the card you'll still notice the same brushed sort of silver looking chassis with the Radeon logo that does actually light up as well. You also have towards the back of the card the sort of Radeon cube which again also lights up and you do have two 8 pin power connectors towards the back of the card just above that Radeon cube. I would also make a note that above the actual full Radeon logo you do actually have a BIOS dip switch which can change the power profile mode and clock speed mode depending on if you are actually overclocking the card and what you want to do with it. The back plate is very well ventilated, also features a black cross section that holds the card all together and especially holds the heatsink to the GPU and overall just looks very nice. Also has a Vega logo on the back although this one doesn't light up. So now you know the specs and what the card looks like, let's take a look at its performance. Starting off with 3 Mark Firestrike with an i7 7700K, you're looking at a performance fairly equal to a ASUS 1080 Strix for example. Obviously this one is a reference card versus the Strix which is obviously a non-reference card but I would mention that in games you're actually, especially Dirt Rally, seeing a little bit better performance than uh, the 1080 of, over the Arx Vega but of course when it comes to GTA 5 which is a little bit more of an Intel and Nvidia optimized title, at least at this point anyway, you're looking at less uh, or lower performance with the same hardware so uh, that's on 1080p, 1440p and 4K as well so do bear that one in mind and if you're a heavy GTA 5 player then uh, that might be uh, something you take into account. When it comes to Doom though, especially running on Vulcan, you can see there is actually a pretty decent performance difference here where the RX Vega 64 sits a little bit higher than the 1080, still lower than the 1080 Ti though. When it comes to Unigen Heaven, this one was a little bit strange as it was actually kind of matching the 1070 rather than the 1080 here. I think there's potential for a little bit of a sort of leniency because it's DX11 and stuff like that, but uh, nonetheless still pretty interesting. Now I was actually pretty surprised by these uh, these performance numbers. Now I have actually retested my GTX 1080 and included Player Unknown's Battlegrounds in a video that I'm doing in two days time on Wednesday, so do take a look at that video and if you're not already subscribed, do hit that subscribe button so that that video shows up in your subscription descriptions and hit the uh, bell icon to be notified of that but otherwise uh, just in terms of the results that I have here I was pretty surprised that it does basically match up with a 1080 again very similar price point to a 1080 as well but especially since the AMD hasn't really had a card on the high end it is really nice to see them on this sort of level again actually competing with the 1070 and 1080s but they don't really have any competitor for the 1080 Ti or the you know Titan X PP at this point so it'll be interesting to see perhaps what the future holds. I'd also mention that I don't think that the HBM2 is really being fully utilized at this point. Of course, we have a 945 megahertz 
uh, clock speed for the memory in a two, 2048 bit bus, which is kind of incredible. And obviously we now have eight gigs of HBM2 as well, which is very nice for your more high resolution gaming and stuff like that. But at the same time, I do want to mention that I don't think that the, the games are necessarily optimized for having such uh, ability in uh, being able to fill the memory very quickly. I think Doom with Vulcan kind of shows that off a little bit. As you can see, most of the other games, you're looking at a little bit lower performance than the 1080, but running Vulcan, you can see that it's actually a little bit faster than the 1080. So I think in terms of optimizations, that would definitely help. So what's the verdict here? Should you pick one of these up? Well, if you can find one, and especially if the miners haven't got to them first, then they're still a pretty good deal. Of course, they're matching the 1080 in performance, at least for the 64 model anyway. And if you plan on overclocking them, then you might even get a better shout. And of course, there will be add-in partner cards that will run a little bit higher and possibly even a little bit cooler as well as this one ran fairly loud and about 80 degrees Celsius. But uh, overall, it's still a pretty awesome card. It's great to see AMD back at the high end, but I would like to see a bit more of a super high end competitor to stuff like the 1080 Ti. When it comes to scoring for me, this is going to be a 4.5 Vive Money. I think in terms of performance, it has to be a 4.5 as well. In terms of functionality, I'm going to go with 4.52 and styling has to be a 5 here. In terms of Tetris Movie Score, I think it's going to be a 4.5 and I think it has to be a gold award. It's a fantastic card. I really do love that AMD is back at the high end market again and with a pretty decent card at a pretty decent price point. It doesn't look as disruptive as the Ryzen processors were for the Intel versus AMD battle, but at this point it's nice to have the competition again, even just a little bit. If you want to know any more about the card or take a look at the price when and where you watch this, take a look at the links in the description down below. I've also left Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links, which they do genuinely help me out and genuinely support me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, and especially with my recent health updates. Um, it's genuinely a fantastic thing to be able to know that I'm still going to be living in this house uh, and stuff like that. So uh, if you could use those, that'd be fantastic. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe, as I said, for the, the new video on the 1080 versus the Vega 64. And of course, plenty of the other videos are coming out over the next few weeks, months, and hopefully even years. Otherwise, there's some other videos over here for you to take a look at. And of course, the subscribe button up here too. And uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of that really. Hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful and informative. What do you think of the card? Are you happy to see AMD back at the high end or are you a bit sad that there's not quite a, a 1080 Ti competitor here? Let me know in the comments down below and otherwise we'll see you all in the next video.